Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring a historic plantation site located off of Woodyard Road just east of Clinton, Maryland that's considered amongst the finest of 18th century Georgian mansions constructed under Prince George's County's elite of the era, a class which consisted namely of wealthy planters and merchants. Also referred to as Poplar Hill and rumored to house a range of restless spirits tied to its past, are you prepared to brave the history and hauntings of his lord? Ship's kindness. Oh, and since the name feels as strange to say as it probably does to hear, that's the plantation. It's literally called His Lordship's Kindness. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Historically, in 1703, one Colonel Henry Darnall was granted a plot of 7,000 acres under 3rd Baron of Baltimore, Charles Calvert, and incidentally, he would call this gift land his lordship's kindness in honor of the grand gesture. Over the years, Darnall would set to work constructing a house on site, which upon his death in 1711, he would pass on to his son, Henry Darnall II, and after which, along with a great deal of additional acquired land, Henry II would be forced to sell in order to clear his own debts. Following this massive liquidation, Henry II would be left with around 1,300 acres, which included the family mansion that was more often referred to as Poplar Hill by the 1740s. And in 1761, Henry III would be caught embezzling massive amounts of money and would end up losing the ancestral estate in order to pay off his fines. Following the loss of Poplar, Henry III's brother, Robert Darnall, would acquire the funds necessary to buy back the original grant, and by 1786, he would replace the original structure with the plantation home we know today. In 1803, Robert, who remained childless, would pass the estate on to his nephew, Robert Sewell, after which his lordship's kindness would remain in the hands of Darnall descendants until 1929, when the site was sold and made its way through several owners, including David K. E. Bruce, Chandler Hale, and the Catholic Archdiocese of Washington itself. In 1955, the aged property and its remaining 137 acres were sold to John and Sarah Walton. In 1988, following Sarah's passing, the John M. and Sarah R. Walton Foundation Incorporated was founded in order to preserve the expanse for educational use. In 1995, the whole of His Lordship's kindness was transferred to the foundation, with public tours beginning just a year later in 96. And in 2009, walk-in tours were suspended in favor of group reservations only. In the present, His Lordship's kindness remains open to the public for reserved viewings and events, with the site offering a terraced boxwood garden, a family cemetery, a slew of outbuildings, former slave hospital, a smokehouse, wash house, privy, pigeon cot, and even boarding for horses. Rather classically, the whole of mansion grounds are believed to be haunted by the souls of those tied to the property and lives since past. Incidentally, multiple generations of Darnells have passed through the home, a number of which are actually laid to rest right on site within what's now called Resurrection Cemetery, which remains under the care of the Archdiocese. Additionally, and rather sadly, more recent issues revolving around the improper handling and unsanctioned moving of remains within Resurrection have arisen, and have even prompted several family members to transfer associated remains to new yards. All things considered, it seems pretty obvious why this site is surrounded with so much supernatural discord, and those who have frequented plantation bounds have reported a range of paranormal phenomena, including orbs and spook lights visible to the naked eye, strange wafts of fog or mist that float with seeming sentience, and the constant feelings of being watched, of being followed, or even of being brushed up against by a presence unseen. Within Resurrection Cemetery itself, many have observed various entities wandering about, some theorize forever searching for their rightful final resting places. While near the former slave hospital, some have told of disembodied cries and screams, and of the overwhelming feelings of sadness, fear, and hopelessness. Several informal investigations of the property have yielded odd malfunctions in well-maintenanced gear, high EMF levels, and chilling EVPs, and a number of reports describe encounters with what are believed to be the spirits of various former slaves, who are always seemingly hurrying just out of sight when noticed. Lastly, and confined to no area in particular, are accounts of extreme cold spots felt on hot days, of doors opening and closing on their own, of lights flickering, of disembodied footsteps and of the sounds of phantom children playing, and of encounters with the full-bodied entities of multiple generations of Darnals, all who seem content in the way their family abode has been kept up. Thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel deserves a good scare. We'll catch you next time.